Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was glad when it said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Now for the Word of Faith uh, Worship Center, I just want to welcome everyone here today. Oh, yes, uh, in the in the back, we want to welcome you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And also, we want to welcome Hope Church. Uh, they will be uh, over the Facebook live with us. Uh, this morning, so we want to welcome Hope Church this morning, and Math and Matthew, and it's good to see everybody, uh, Helen and 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 Angel and Alan. It's good to see you guys again. Yep. And my fact, it is good to see everybody. And especially my wife, uh, Tammy, she back. <laughs> yep. Yes. So uh, I'm just getting the opportunity to, uh, Tammy, will she, do she have anything to say uh, right now? Yeah, but it's <laughs> as an announcement though. We have uh sun service start at ten PM, children's service uh start right after uh tithes and offering. Amen. Our vision preaching and teaching the word of faith to the world to make it ready, a people prepared for the Lord. Let us remember all the sick to shed in and the needed in our prayers everywhere. Also let's lift up uh Israel, uh Keep them in our prayers also. also uh, well, let's just pray for the whole nation, the, the world. Amen. Uh, the theme for the year 2024, a year of open doors or more. Amen. The Greek word passion for the month is passion. Amen. Today, uh, we have Mission Sunday, our very own uh, Dr. Lisa, uh, our mission and uh, for the birthdays, one uh, happy birthday for the ones that uh, have her birthday. We didn't have no anniversary this uh, this month, but uh, Deanna Riviera, her birthday is Friday, so let's lift lift them up and also lift up our father. I think he on uh, the mission uh, army deployment mission. But uh, just uh, keep him lifted up also, that family. Amen. And on the 28th, we got a special singing at 6 o'clock. That's on the 28th of this month with Keep Plot. Keep Plot going to be at 6 o'clock uh, on the 28th. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. We're going to well, be led, uh, led to lead by uh, Cecil Adams. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whom the kingdom stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. 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 Thanks, Cecil. Amen. Let's just continue to stand. Just let's continue to stand. Oh, for, the, for, the, for the word of God this morning, I'm coming out of New King James Version, John chapter 4, John chapter 14, verse 1 through 6. And it's read as following. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mentioned. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Therefore, I am there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you, go, you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except through me. May the Lord have blessing to the reader of his word. Amen. Let's give God a hand wave this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him a hand wave, a hand wave. Oh, hallelujah. Shout, open your mouth, saints of God. Let's give, give him a hand wave. Oh, hallelujah. So you is worthy. Oh, hallelujah. As praise team come forth. Oh, hallelujah. Don't just continue to praise the Lord as praise team come forth. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise team. Oh, hallelujah. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Just keep it going, keep it going. Oh, hallelujah, because God, he is good. Oh, hallelujah, yes, Lord, and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 To stand and lift our arms and surrender to God this morning, give all the glory to him. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Our glory to you, Father. Glory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Who holds the heavens in his hands? Who made the stars by the word of his power? Who put the spirit in man? Causes all the earth to cry out glory. Glory to the Lord. Worship Him. Just by the hand, who is the way in this marvelous hour? Who stirs the heart of a man and causes all his saints to cry out glory?
worship you and worship and surrender to you and give our lives unto you. Yes. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And here we are, lifting our hands to you. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Here we are, giving you thanks for all you do. And as we pray and worship your we cannot see, for all that's yet to be, so much is yet to be, the trials we may have to
Continue, continue to stand. You know, Israel is under attack, but the body of Christ is under attack. God 
has the victory. We have the victory. Israel has the victory. And I remember reading in my Bible that says when the enemies of God came against the people of God, God would send out the praise team. Yes. He would send those that had a praise in their voice because they had victory in their voice. And this is the day that God has made, and we're proclaiming victory for Israel, but not just Israel, but for all the people of God. So, Lord, as we stand here today, we stand here supporting your people, praying for the peace of Jerusalem, praying for the peace of Israel. Lord, praying for the victory. For the victory, the battle is the Lord's. And we win the battle on our knees, but today we're standing, Lord, praising you. We thank you. You inhabit our praise. And, Lord, you are fighting for your country. You're fighting for the Holy Land over there, Lord. And you're fighting, Lord. Today we're fighting for the souls of people that don't know Jesus. So, Father, we give you the praise right now, Lord, that there might be missiles that get missed by man-made missiles, but, God, you got angels to knock them out of the sky. So, Father, we thank you. We believe in miracles, and we believe that we, we know that we have the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Amen. Your prayers. Much. So we are, our prayers are moving the armies of heaven. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated this morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you for giving God your faith this morning. Miss Lisa, if you'll come forth, this is our mission Sunday. Everybody say, I'm on a mission, I'm on a mission. for Jesus. Because as long as we hear, as long as we got feet, as long as we got breath, we got faith in God, we got a victory. We got a mission to do. We got a mission to accomplish. So I'm going to let Miss Lisa tune us in on all the details. You need that handheld mic, don't you? I got to go down here anyway. Leo's got it for you. Leo, give a testimony of what happened back there. I, just, he, he, I got the revelation. Y'all don't realize that I had a, a shoulder replacement four weeks ago. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Uh, I just want to um, remind you that it's Mission Sunday and that we um, have a lot of prayer partners that we, that we um, support and they also support missions. And our, our particular church is uh, supporting the Chamar people of India um, through the Ames missions. And um, we have uh, a family that we uh, pray for and support financially, plus all of our partners uh, that you see up on the screen. And, um, and I just wanna do something a little different today. And I just wanna thank everybody because I'm really excited about this church. Not only do we do missions and support people with our prayers and our finances, but we've got a program where we help um, um, uh, the Baptist children's home there. The Cindy, what is it called? An orphanage, okay. Okay, the orphanage, and then um, and then we're also doing a food thing with um, Bar um, Barbara. What what is the name of that program? Good, thank you. And then today, Pass is going to introduce a new thing that we're going to be doing for babies. So I'm excited that we're not only supporting missions overseas and missions with our, our partners, uh, but we're also trying to do stuff here in our own hometown, which is pretty exciting. And so I just want to give you kudos for that. And uh, I just want to thank you so much for your prayers and, um, and your support. And I love you guys. I just got all kind of things in my hand this morning. Y'all give me a hand. Amen. Give me a hand. 
I'd also like to, uh, to welcome our Hope Church family uh, in Matthews. They're watching through, via our live stream because uh, Pastor Scott and Shirlene are at a wedding. So ain't it amazing what technology can do? Amen. So just don't think uh, something little you're doing doesn't matter to God. I said the little things, you know, God says if you'll be faithful over what? The little things, he'll give you bigger things to do. Amen. So if we be faithful over little baby bottles, God will give us adults. <laughs> Amen. But what I want to introduce to you this morning, we're already partners with Cabarrus Women's Center down here off of, uh, it might even tell me an address here, 163 Winecoff Avenue, just a couple blocks down. And uh, Miss Linda Hansen asked if I'd like to share this. So Miss Lisa is taking some uh, bottles up to the children's church. And kids, if you're interested, you go home and... Uh, when mom or daddy comes home or if you go to school and you see some loose change laying around on the ground, if nobody claims it, pick it up, put it in your pocket and put it in the baby bottle. Because what this is doing, the babies that's being saved and not being aborted, this money in this bottle is going to go help those women when they come looking for help. They're going to find help. Amen? And a lot of times help is in the way of money to bless them so that they can bring food into the family. Amen? So God said now we got the reverse way turned got it turned in our favor now let's go out there and, and put some feet to the ground and help these women when they decide to keep them babies amen so and then uh, adults i'm gonna leave a big bag down here and colette will help me find a place for it uh, we might just sit out here on the pew today but in this bag is bottles and if we take all the bottles i'll get some more <laughs> amen because there's more bottles to be found i'm gonna take me one home because when i walk around on the when I'm walking around on the grounds at uh, my property, I'm seeing dimes and pennies, and I've been walking over them. I'm going to start picking them up and put them in my little can, and I'll put them in the baby bottle. I'll just take a bottle to, to work with me. Amen? So just ways you can be involved. Yeah. Thank you, Leo. See, that's the ministries of help back there, helping the pastor. It put the amount in the bottle, that way they don't have to shake it up and count everything. They're still probably going to run it through a machine, but still, that way they know they can get an account of how much is being brought in for that ministry. And it's got your name and address. Just go ahead and fill it out. Fill out the card, bring in the baby bottle. And if you fill it up, bring it in, and we're going to take these up by Father's Day. So Father's Day, we'll take the bottles up. So if you fill yours up, need some more, just let me know. We get more baby bottles. Amen. So that's something else we're doing. And now, I like Kelsey's got a little, a quick, maybe a three-minute video. And Lisa, if you, if, I think we'll just go ahead and listen to this, and then the kid, ch children can dismiss. But we are uh, partners with Andrew Womack Ministry, and they sent us a, a thank you compliment to all the partners. And I'd like you to see this video. I couldn't tell you how many times that we visit a partner or call a partner and the response we get is, oh, you wouldn't believe it. You, you called at just the right time. You came at just the right time. I'm going through, you know, X, Y, Z. We want them to understand that partnership is reciprocal and it blesses us, but it also blesses them. We here at Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College want to say thank you to our friends and partners for helping us do more than ever before. God is truly doing more than we could ask, think, or imagine. Because of you, this past year we have given away over $6 million worth of free products to people all over the world. Today, our media staff carry the same heart and message, but with a schedule so packed and a scale so large, we now require multiple sets, teams, and studios to handle the output. We have hosted over 800 live stream sessions, including over 260 Karis Daily Live Bible studies, over 240 Truth and Liberty episodes, and over 50 healing schools and relationship university classes. In response to this tremendous influx of content going out, our communication services department had more phones ringing than ever before, with people wanting free prayer, ministry, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because of you, our ministry contacts through calls, letters, and emails has reached a projected total of 1.4 million people. But behind all these numbers, we want to remind you of the individual lives you have helped to impact. 
People like Josephina, who we met this year in France, who had an incurable disorder, interstitial cystitis, before our healing journeys and Andrew's teachings inspired a miraculous recovery. I've been healed. Um, I have had, I'm having, a, you know, a fruitful career and I'm getting married now. And so there's a lot more to come, but thank you God for everything that you've provided to us. And thank you, Andrew Womack, and thank you to the partners. Or Gina, who called into our phone center for healing from stomach cancer. And after prayer, Gina said her stomach began shrinking down to normal size, and she believed that she received her healing in that moment. Or Martin Bashabe, whose time in our Karis location in Kampala, Uganda, equipped him to use his authority in Christ to raise the dead. Then I said to you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to stand up and raise your hands up. So the man stood up and raised his hands. These lives reflect only a small fraction of those you have forever changed through the spreading of God's word. And of course, making all of this new development and growth possible is our friends and partners, a ministry family that grew by nearly 10% this year while paving the way for our financially largest year yet. To you, our friends and partners, thank you so much for what you have already made possible. May this year be our best one yet. Twenty-four, the year of more. Amen. Now, did you see all the the things that's going on up there? The technology, the equipment, that wasn't there twenty-four years ago. I've only been in the ministry now, or been born again, and since uh, twenty-five years, and we've been partners with Andrew. But you know what? Andrew will tell you, he's not that smart to get all this stuff done. But say, but God. <laughs> See, God makes up the difference. He's, seen, he's been sending Andrew the people. Because Andrew will tell you, if you know him, I've been following him and we've been partners, that his mom went to be with heaven maybe, maybe five, eight years ago. And his mama, he said, she took her little bony finger. And with all the things that was happening before, before she left the earth, she, she looked up at Andrew and said, Andy, you know... You ain't, you, you're not making all this happen. It's only because of God. And he said, I remember Mama with her bony finger pointing to me. And he said, yes, Mama, I know. See, stay humble. And God, you know, there was a bumblebee that came in, that blew in my truck the other day coming home from work. And I had some stuff that got underneath it, you know. Years ago, man, I'd be jumping around trying to get out of that truck, you know. But I'm not in fear anymore. But that little bumblebee, his name got changed. He used to be called the humblebee. You know why? Because his wingspan is not big enough for his big fat body. But we called him the humble bee because he's so humble, he don't know about it. He's just thanking God that I can fly. Because it, it, it's really looking at mechanically, it's impossible that that bee's flying. It's impossible for me to be standing here today in my own ability, but I'm staying humble before God because he said we're going to preach and teach the word of faith to the world through radio, through TV, and it's only going to happen if God is with us. Amen? Because it's not my dream, it's His dream. And if you'll, if, you'll, if you'll give your life to Christ and give yourself to Him, all the things that you want to do will come to be. Amen? Because He's a good God, and He loves us. And I, I love Him, and I just appreciate Him. And uh, before we take up the offering... I like my visitor, my brother back here in the white. Come up here this morning. This is something the Lord said I should have been doing this years ago. But we have some visitors come in, and they're the only visitor this morning, right? Only vis first time visitor. Then we're going to bless you. Now, here's a, a couple speakers we've had the last, maybe in the last month. They're uh, CD audios of our last guest speakers. And that's just a little gift in there. You open it up so and be much. blessed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glad to have you this morning. I hear another hallelujah down there. Ooh, I, got a, I got me a hallelujah mi midstream going on. Thank you, little brother. Hallelujah. I tell you what, Jesus said if they don't, if, if, if we don't give him praise, the rocks are going to cry out. I tell you what, let the babies cry out. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you'll stand this morning, we'll get our confession, our mission statement, our confession before the Lord. Have a purpose to give. We've given you examples of, of when you give here we take what comes in and we give 
This church, we give over 10% uh, tithe to our partners as the Lord leads us. More, the more you give, the more is going to come in. God's just faithful. He can't lie. So this is our confession out of Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 11. The Bible says all scripture is given to give us encouragement, to, to profit. Say profit. profit. Who wants to profit? <laughs> God wants you to profit. So Lord, Father God, we thank you today that according to your word in Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 11, say we're getting our lands and our places of employment. All of our debts are being eliminated and we'll owe no man nothing but to love one another. Today we claim our great and goodly cities, all of our houses full of good things, our vehicles and all the equipment and people we need to preach and teach the word of faith to the world. Why? To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Bring your tithes and offerings to the front. Bless the Lord. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire. Time after time, born of the Spirit, washed in His blood. What He did for me on Calvary is more than enough. I trust in. 
ask you this morning, who, what are you trusting in? The Lord says, what are you trusting in? If you're trusting in anything besides God, it's rusting. I said, it's decaying. There's corrosion on it. But my God, who is in heaven, who created the heavens and the earth, says, in my kingdom, nothing corrupts, nothing corrodes, because I'm the God of, I'm the author of life and not death. So if you're trusting in any other God besides Jesus, you're not trusting in God. And you do not have life because Jesus said, except you come to my Father in me, there's no other way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And today he's inviting you to come in. Not just only to come, but to stay in the Father's hand, in the Father's house. There's peace in his house. There's joy in his house. There's hope in the house of God. It's not a house made of man's hands. It's made by God who made man. Amen. See, the devil wants to reverse everything. He can't make, the devil can't make nothing. All he can do is deceive and convert and twist things. But not us, not us. We're not going to be deceived and we're not going to be twisted and he's not going to steal from me anymore. Why? Because Jesus shut the door on him over 2,000 years ago. And the, and the father said, come up here, son, when he raised him from the dead. Come up here and sit down until I make your enemies your footstool. Amen. Now, God has put that in our control. Because what? We the body. Where's the head at? Come on. Somebody tell me where the head is. The head's in heaven, seated, and we are his body. And he has given us authority over the devil, not over people. Come on, don't miss that. That's a big key. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You can't go out there on that street and buy drugs from the devil. You can't go out there to the ABC store and buy alcohol from the devil. You can't go out there and get... And, 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 you got to find somebody to buy it from that's possessed or being used by the devil. And see, people are not our problem, but people bound by the devil are. <laughs> but we're not focusing on the problem. We're focusing on the answer, and the answer is Jesus. And if we focus on him and follow him, and if they'll hear, the people will hear us, hear this good news that we're going to bring them. If they'll follow, they can be delivered from the devil. They can be delivered from alcohol. They can be delivered from fentanyl. They can be delivered from the drugs because the devil doesn't have no power unless you give it to him. Right. See, he's looking for a body too, but he cannot have the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. He's been trying for years to find that body, to find that baby. Herod tried to find that baby. He killed a lot of babies trying to find Jesus. And some people might, might say, well, why did God let, let Herod kill all those babies? I'm not the judge, but let me tell you this. Herod's going to pay for what he did. Herod's already paying for what he did. But Jesus paid our debt. I'm just as guilty of, as Herod was until I received Jesus. I'm no better than Herod until I got born again. Amen. And, and what makes me better is now I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. See, the Bible says we've all fallen short. It don't matter who we are. We all miss the mark. But Jesus, Jesus hit the bullseye. I said, Jesus, when he, when he was sacrificed on that cross, he became the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of God, but he became sin. That's the gospel message. Jesus became sin so that you, we could become the righteousness of God in him. That's good news. Amen. That's a miracle. Hallelujah. Whew, that's enough to make you want to shout. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's good news. My little bookmark keeps falling to the ground. We're going to trust in God. We're going to sing about it, and we're going to do it. Amen? We're not trusting it now. The money you sowed this morning is neither good nor evil. But when you sow it in faith to God, God's going to make it come back to you. 
He's going to give you the power. He's going to give you wisdom and revelation to go out there and make money. And if you retired, it don't matter. God's still going to make the money come to you because <laughs> that's just what he does. Money you've made. See, it's a perpetual, I think that's a perpetual harvest. It just keeps coming, right? And you don't have to, once the seed gets in the ground and the sun comes in the water, you don't have to figure out how it comes up. You just, you just watch it. So, so once you give this morning, don't, don't watch your bank account. <laughs> well, do watch it. <laughs> grow. <laughs> Expect it to grow, right? I said grow, not decrease, increase. Because we serve a God of increase. Now, I didn't have a, I didn't have a scripture for the offering, but there it was. <laughs> Amen. There it is. It's going to come out somehow. You can't serve God faithfully and not grow. Come on. You can't, it's impossible. God will not let you fail. Amen. If you got him, you're going you're gonna to succeed. Amen. That's where success comes from is in Christ. Amen. And him alone. Amen. Amen. And, and, if, and if you keep seeking him, he won't never leave you alone. He's never going to leave you, but he'll bother you. <laughs> he'll wake you up and say, move your stocks, move your pension, move your 401k. Now, he hasn't told me this, but he'll tell my wife because she knows better than I do <laughs> about numbers. Move it over here. Take it over there. I had a dream. Come on, God, keep telling you about this. The Bible, Joel prophesied, in the last days when I pour out my spirit on all flesh, my young men are going to see visions. My old men, now I'm looking at Jim, I look at somebody else when I say old. because <laughs> he, he don't claim to be old. <laughs> I won't look at nobody. I ain't going to call you old. But my old men shall, what, dream dreams. Now, I'm not saying I'm old because I keep dreaming, but if you don't dream... Tell God you want to dream. Man, I dream a lot. But I, I dreamed this dream, and I woke up knowing I needed to call my daughter, Ruthie. Kelsey said, what, Migos? Daddy didn't call me that early. I called her at around 930, and she didn't answer. This is Saturday at 930. I know she ain't in school. She's not working. Went to voicemail. Usually she calls me back. Hour and a half later, I called her back again because she didn't call me back, and she, she answered. I said, what you been doing? sleeping i'm like my it's time to get up but no you're off sleep you need to but i said ruthie I, I need to tell you something can i tell you something randy can i tell you the dream not not a not a big vivid dream but i believe in dreams i believe in god dreams yeah. and and i saw ruthie she's a teacher she teaches high school kids thank you <laughs> she needs your prayers and she's, I, I see kids, like I see kids in the back back here. When I say kids younger than me, they were kind of small, kind of mixed kids. And, and I know Ruthie's the teacher. You just kind of know Ruthie's teaching these kids. But then the Lord said to me, she's transforming their lives, Wayne, just like you're doing, teaching. Not by what she's teaching math, but by showing them Jesus in the way she walks, in the way she talks, in the way she carries herself, in her character. Because there's so many troubled kids out there at home with daddy not there, mama not there, all kind of things. And then they got to come to school and try to learn when they're coming out of a, in a dark environment where they're being persecuted or being beaten. I'm just telling you things that's happening out there. And, and, and here's Ruthie, she's a 24-year-old 20, young lady trying to teach them what they need to succeed by the world standard. But the Lord impressed me to tell her, Ruthie, you're making history right now. See, they want to tell them, don't, you know, don't talk about, be careful how you talk about this or talk about that, Palestinians and Israel, you know, don't, you know, be careful how you talk. Do not be careful. Tell it. Tell the truth. But we're making history right now. Yes. There's history. When Iran fired at Israel, history is being made right now. That, that hasn't happened. You know, to the intent that Iran is directly shooting at Israel. Yes. But let me tell you somebody else, somebody else that's made history. Jesus. Yes. He, he's the beginning and the end of history. Amen. Yes. And, he, and, and I had this impressed to tell Ruthie. You're changing lives. Don't be quiet. 
Take what God, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and speak it. Teach it. Because he told me, Jim, to tell her, you are a teacher sent from God. Amen. That's, his, that's exact words. Just like they said Jesus, told Jesus, we know that you are a teacher sent from God because you, could, these, you cannot do these miracles except God be with you. But not only was God with him, he is God. Jesus is God. And when you get born again, he takes your spirit and you get born again, you're in the family. And he puts his spirit, the Holy Ghost, in us. Not just to make us look good, but to be good. Amen. To be holy. Not by what we do, but by who we are. Amen. Yeah, we're, we're going to fall short. We're going to fail. But God, his love never fails. His spirit never fails. Amen. And see, the devil wants to know, but when you fail, he wants to kick you on down to where what you're doing doesn't matter. But it does, Brittany. What you're doing matters. It's making a difference. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and me just being a teacher, I taught. It cares, not cares. Thank you, Jesus. I have a desire to teach. We might have a Concord campus here. But anyway, I taught at Life Christian University. And you know what my purpose was? To make sure that these students... Two things. <laughs> Make sure that they know who they are in Christ, but also, what, Jim? Pass this test. <laughs> Pass this course. Amen? Because that's what they're there for, to get an education. Well, when I, I had to take my CPO training, I might have told you. Did I tell you guys this? I didn't tell you because I hadn't passed it. I didn't tell you this last Sunday about pool, did I? Well, I had to, I had to take the test because I took it Tuesday and Wednesday. I couldn't have told you about it. I had to take it this week. And it's an online class. And let me tell you, when the instructor, he's from Florida, so we all tune in. Now, we're talking about miracles, but we're also talking about seed, time, and harvest. Amen. That's the word of God. This earth functions on that principle. Seed, time, and harvest. What you say, what you put in the ground, is you, it's coming up. Amen. God said, "Don't I won't be mocked. Whatever man sows, what? You're going to reap. So I, I sowed. I would tell my students, because this was taught me too, if I say this question is important, you want to highlight it, mark it, it's going to be on the test. <laughs> it's very important as we went through that syllabus. And I made sure, that, you know, we, we only have four weeks to teach one course. So I made sure everything that was on the test that I had to teach, that I made sure they heard it at least once or twice. Amen. I want them to pass. God wants us to pass his test. Amen? To be born again and be blessed. They go hand in hand. And if you're not being blessed, you're not doing it right. Amen? So when, I, when, my, when my CPO instructor, I won't tell his name, but he's a blessing. He works for, well, I won't even tell you who he works for. But you know what he told me, Miss Tammy? He said, now my job as an instructor about water, pools, spas, we don't have spas, no heated pools, is to make sure that you know what's on this test so you can pass it. I started feeling good about this instructor. <laughs> I started feeling good. Now, he says, and when I go through here, I want you to mark and highlight in this book, and I'm going to tell you what page to go to, but I'm going to tell you some things too, but if I tell you to highlight it, it's going to be on your test. I was hearing from heaven. I was going to light this test. And you know what I did? I highlighted, and I actually took notes, too. Made my special notes. Would anybody like, it's a 50-question test. Would you like to know what I made? Take a guess at what I made. I made 100. Woo! I was like, that's what I said. Woo! Now, and, and, and now, the, now the instructor said, if you have a problem with a question, unmute your mic, because it's online. There's like 15, 20 people from six or seven states. One of them was from Colorado. He said, unmute your mic and ask me the question, and we will make sure you get the answer. So I did, but Brittany, my mic wasn't working. It, it worked the first day, but I didn't want to unhook from the class. I'd be afraid I'd, it would fail my test because you know, you're online. And you got a video. So I'm like, I'm hitting that mute button. I ain't got time to go into Windows settings. and <laughs> I know how to do all that stuff, but I'm like, Hey, I need, to, I need to ask you a question. Hey, hitting my mic. But you know what he said? It's an online test. It's an open book exam. 
So I said, Google. <laughs> Google. I asked him the question. You know what? He gave me the answer. Now, I, I, I might not have made 100 because I, I kind of felt like I knew it, but I wanted, to, I wanted to ask the teacher. He said, if you don't know it, ask me. God said, if you don't know, ask me. <laughs> Come on. And I'll tell you, choose life. I set before you a test. Life and death. Blessing and cursing. Choose life. God said, choose life. I'm giving you the answer. Choose life. Now, a lot of people don't even show up to class. They don't come to church. Hello. We got people back here, visitors. They came to church. Amen. They looked and they searched. Say they're looking for the right church. And I'm not saying we just the right, we are the right church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just not tooting my horn. I'm tooting Jesus' horn. Yeah. Toot, toot. Yeah. Amen. Because yeah. he is the right church. Yes, he is. Go to the book of Revelations. There's a lot of churches. I want my, I want my, oil, I want my oil and lights and everything working. Amen. Yeah. We pay the power bill. This church is debt free. Come on. Amen. Can I get some of the people that's been here since this church has formed? Raise your hand. They shouting, this church is debt free. They, they, but they've seen days when it wasn't debt free. They have been faithful over here, amen, amen, to make sure to be good stewards of this church, of the finances. Amen. So I'm here to feed you and teach you the word of God. Amen. amen. So I made 100, but I did it right because I could ask him just like I could ask Google, but my mic wasn't working. <laughs> So I take that because I had a good instructor. We've got the Holy Ghost. God said, Jesus said, before I leave, I don't want to leave. I'm going to leave you, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you another instructor, another teacher from God, just like me. Amen. He's going to say the same thing I've been telling you, except this time you're not going to see me. You're going to hear him. Come on. Amen. Same voice, same, same God, same Holy Ghost. So this is how we pass the test of sickness to be healed. We got to know what the answer is. Jesus said that the crippled guy, the guy with leprosy said, Lord, would you heal me? He said, I will be healed. <laughs> Jesus didn't have to go ask the father if it's the father's will that he be healed. I will be healed. Because he said, Lord, if it's your will, you can heal me. What is God's will to heal? Yes. <laughs> I will be healed. So see, it's not just up to God. It wasn't God's choice. It's not God's plan that people that we suffer. That was not God's plan that man suffer. But there was another evil one called the dead. His name was Lucifer. But he decided he wanted to be like the Most High, who he was created by God. But God even gave the angel a choice. You can either serve me or not. So this angel decided, I want to be like the Most High. Wrong choice, wrong answer. And it cost Lucifer. But you know what? When he got kicked out, that wasn't enough. You know what he did? He came and he came against Adam. Just like they're coming against Israel. They're not satisfied with the land God gave them. They've got land. But they, it's the same devil. Amen. I want your position. I want your land. Yep. God says it's not yours. But they're persisting, just like the devil is persisting to try to get me. They're trying to get the land. But God says it ain't going to. Some people are giving their life and they're martyrs. But you know what? God's not finished yet. Right. He's given. He's extended grace. Thank God we're under grace. Amen. There's a lot of people that have been lost, that have been far gone way, way before now because of God's grace and mercy. Because of his grace... His wrath is not being poured out on us. It was poured out on Jesus. That's right. But once we leave, the church leaves, there's a new dispensation coming in. <laughs> Grace is leaving, and then wrath is coming back. The judgment's coming back. You're going to either do this or not. If you're going back to Deuteronomy. So thank God, now's the day of salvation. God's sin is not being punished because of what we've done. It's being forgiven because of what Jesus did. Get in now. Amen. Get born again now because there's coming a time to where you're going to have to live by the law and choose, and you can still be saved, but you don't want to go back underneath that lawmaster, that schoolmaster. You won't get underneath the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 
now is the good time to get in. Man, it, there'll never be another a season like we're in of the grace of the church. Hey, Amen. The day of Pente- Pentecost is coming. Pentecost Sunday is coming up again. We're going to celebrate it, but thank God it's already came. Amen. The fire was given. The Holy Ghost was given as a gift. But you've got to receive him, amen, and let him endue you with his power. Amen. So we won't be deceived. We're going to have ears to hear. Hallelujah. But, but it, get back to the pool test. See, I passed. But you know what? I went back, and that was paid for by my company because when our pool is open, now I'm a CPO pool certification guy. I'm the pool man. Does that make me a better man than my supervisor? He's a pool man too. But let me tell you, see, I'm, 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 I'm remember. See, that bumblebee flew in just for a purpose, to remind me to stay humble, Josh. Stay humble before the Lord. See, God's brought me up to this pulpit not to be higher than you, but to bring the fire to you. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was going to say. I knew what I wasn't going to say. I'm not up here because I'm above you. I'm up here because I love you. Amen. God sent me to you to teach you about faith. That's my assignment. So, but now, at my secular job, there's a pool there. And for me to get an increase in wages, I've got to be pool certified. So I'm going to get an increase in wage because I got certified, but that doesn't make me Mr. Pool Man. Because <laughs> I come back say, I'm staying humble. I said, this is going to be a good message for Sunday morning because the Lord gave it to me. Now, we get into the lame man. He's still, you know, he's been lame since birth. But there's a day coming he's going to get healed. Amen. I don't know if it's going to be this Sunday or not because Jesus went to that temple many times. You know what? He didn't get his miracle to after Jesus went to heaven. Why, Pastor? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you. If I don't know, I ain't going to make up something. I don't know it all. Neither does Jesus. Who? Can anybody say amen? amen? Jesus don't know when he's coming back. Only the Father. Now, if God de- decides to keep that revelation to him, who am, I to, who am I to beg and plead with God? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me why my, tell me why, tell me why. Tell me why one of my nephews is not here. And this, this is a true, that's true. I don't know all the whys because God won't reveal your stuff to me. <laughs> Amen? But, but if you ask... He'll set you free from your stuff, your messed up stuff. Because when I came back, I think I told Steve, my supervisor, first. I said, now, Steve, because I've been asking him about that pool because I came in in wintertime. Nobody's in the pool. It's closed. But I've been watching Steve. I haven't been doing a lot to it because I know one day i got to mess with that pool. So every time I walk by that pool, you know what that pool is talking to me, Jim. <laughs> See, Jesus said, there's trees. Things will talk to you. And, is, and that pool saying, you're going to you're gonna have to come in here one day and you're going to have to mix chemicals because I've done this before and you got to make sure I'm safe. <laughs> so that pool's been talking to me. And I don't know all these things. There's some unknowns I don't know. But Steve, my supervisor, he knows them. I said, Steve, you going to train me a little bit on the pool? No, we ain't worried about that pool right now. Why? He knows what he's doing. He's got other stuff he needs. He, it's more important right now because that, that pool's locked up. This is going to preach. <laughs> so I'm humble enough to go to my supervisor and say, now, Steve and, and my property manager, thank you for, for paying for my certification. And I made 100, but let me tell you something. I got a lot of information in 16 hours, but I need revelation. I got a lot of stuff that instructor told me, but I need to put my hands in that pool now. I need some revelation. I need to work with some chemicals because I, I need to figure this thing out. Because the information is not going to get you to heaven. A lot of people say they know God, but until you know about God, but they don't know him. They don't have a revelation of who he is. Because if they had a written, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. What is his commands? How many is that? Which which Jesus said, you just got to keep how many? Two. Two. I like two. Say yes to Jesus. Say yes to Jesus. What have I got to do, Lord? Tell people to love God and love their neighbor as their self. All the commandments hang on those two. So, I mean, it's good to go to college, Bible college, but that's the two things you need to know to get people born again. 
What must I do to be saved? Believe on Jesus. And what do I got to do to believe on Jesus and, and please him? Love God and love people. That's it. Jesus said it's not grievous. Now the law, ooh, low. Now we're talking 300, 300 plus things you got to do. There's a lot of things that you can do to that pool, but there's only a few things you got to do to, to satisfy, you know, watch this step, because sometimes I might step off. <laughs> there's only a couple things you got to do, what, to satisfy the health department according to their health rules to keep people safe. And I'm not going to tell you all of it because I really don't have revelation yet. <laughs> Come on. You got to keep it between a 7 and a 7.2. You've got a goal there, the pH, pH balance. Acidic, all these different chemicals. See, I'm not a chemist. I'm a preacher. <laughs> I'm a teacher. But right now, I've got to work on some pools. Well, let me tell you, there was a man by the pool saloon. Come on. I see how the Lord kind of hooking this together a little bit now. I'm a pool man. God had to send a pool man to the pool to get, the, get that man healed. Now, there's, I'm talking about a couple different people here. There's one that had been there waiting on somebody to stir the water, put some chemicals in it. <laughs> Make it safe. Make it miracle water. Let me tell you, church, you don't have to go to Jerusalem to get holy water. Come on. <laughs> you don't have to pay $25 to get holy water to get people healed. All you got to do is pay the price. Believe. Believe enough to do it. Believe on Jesus. Believe that you take it, take oil, and lay, it on, lay hands on the sick and pray. Anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And believe that they'll get healed, and Jesus will heal them. Amen? Faith in his name. So, see, I, I need some revelation on that pool, Terry, before I'm, I'm ready to say, now, y'all kind of laugh at this. I hope you do. I, got, I did get a little revelation. There's three maintenance guys. I'm, I'm the last one coming in. But uh, the other two are certified, Cecil, so they got a thing that if you're the last man coming in certified, if there's a floater in the pool, you the last man, you get called in. <laughs> Do y'all know what the floater in the pool is? I don't want to get into great detail. If something's floating in the pool that ain't supposed to be there, they're going to call me. I got to get that. You know what? I said, I might say, what's wrong with Mr. Jackson? He's not answering his phone. <laughs> Why ain't he answering his phone? The Holy Ghost said, <laughs> there's a floater in the pool. Put it on mute. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I, 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 I can get my faith. Lord, I don't want no floaters in your pool. Hey, I know a God that does miracles. Amen. If Bobby's got to go, he'll go while he's at home. Amen. <laughs> he won't wait to go to the pool. Come on. Hallelujah. Punch somebody and say, go to the pool. <laughs> Just makes you want to go to the pool, don't it? <coughs> Woo, glory. Come to my pool. We have a good pool. It's only five foot deep. I didn't know that until I looked. Hallelujah. Have we got time to get the lame man healed today? <laughs> Come on. Somebody's got to agree. somebody got to say, where's he at? Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3. Acts 3. So the, the, the short end of that is just because you got information, don't mean you got the revelation. See, there's a lot, there's a lot of information in this book, Randy. And before I got born again and filled, say filled, filled. with the Holy Ghost, I started getting some revelation. Can I can I tell, can I share this? Because I mean, this is one of my favorite, but I'm probably shared it before. I think I had, I might have shared it last night about the helicopter seed. You know, that was my that was my first one of my, one of my first revelations that Jesus was the seed that God sowed into the ground to bring forth Christians. When I was out blowing, maintenance, you know, all these seeds are falling down. Well, that's, that's a pool. A pool, those little seeds are not a, a pool's friend. They fall in that water to get stopped up in those skimmers, and that water starts going. It can't filter the pool, Larry. But with, unless that seed gets in the ground, there ain't going to be no trees on this earth. <laughs> but see, there's not pools everywhere, but we got to have seed to have harvest. We got to have trees to breathe, right? right? If I'm right, trees give out CO, carbon dioxide. So we now they give out oxygen, oxygen and we give out carbon dioxide. Right. 
We give them what they need, and they give us what they need. We give us what, they give us what we need. You think God knew we needed that tree? But don't get in fear because, how about they're cutting all the trees? They're cutting all the trees down. We're not going to have enough trees. God knew we are going to need trees. There's a lot of trees. But that don't mean we can cut them all down. And if we, and if we started cutting them all down, we would have a problem. But we, God knew we could not have enough people that would be stupid enough to go cut all the trees down. Stupid is not a bad word, is it? <laughs> Y'all thinking about that one. Uh, what I say? Acts 3? Oh, we can't start. Let's go to Acts 2. What do you think? We need to go to Acts 2, don't we? We need to see what happened to Peter. Because unless you like Peter, you ain't going to get nobody healed. Now, I'm talking about the new Peter, <laughs> not the old Peter. The old Peter cut your cut your ear off and they let you bleed out. That's the old Peter. If you mess with Jesus, he cuts you and lets you bleed out, man. But Jesus said, no, 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 don't do that, Peter. We need these people, Peter. <laughs> God, my father loves these people. Uh, let me see where I want to take you to. Did I say Acts 2? Did I tell you where? Uh, where is Acts 2? You're just disappearing on me. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now, let's not go there quite yet. Uh, let's go to Acts 2.14. Now, this is after Pentecost. <clears throat> this is after the Holy Ghost filled the church, those 120. You know, there was more room up there than more than 100. You know, there's more room in this church. It says 135, so there, we got room for more, right? Yes. God, don't, God just don't send a certain amount of people. God, there was more room in that upper room for 120. Because God always makes sure he's got enough for more. But only 120 said they really trusted God. But the ones that really trusted God, Peter was one of them. And it said, Peter, standing up with the 11, this is after he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And they've been speaking in tongues. He raised his voice. He sometimes you, I raise my voice, but I leave here, my, my voice might come down. Sometimes you need to raise your voice. Amen. To get above the other voices that don't mean, they're, they're telling you they're lying. He raised his voice and said to them, they were asking Peter questions, what's going on? He said, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. Sounds like Jesus talking, don't it? For these are not drunk, so they was all speaking all kind of, speaking tongues and unknown languages. But these men downstairs, they could, they, each one of them was hearing them in their own language. There was a miracle going on. They're not drunk being only 9 a.m. in the morning. So Peter kind of telling on some people, well, I know y'all drink, they get drunk sometimes, but not today, they ain't drunk this morning. They drunk, but they ain't drunk on what you drink. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, say last days, last say days. final moments final of moments. the last days. That's, what, that's the stage we on. We in the final moments. Because uh, it was the last days 2,000 years ago. Uh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So mom and dad, don't get on. Pastors, quit getting on the women. They can prophesy too. They can preach the gospel just as good as I can. Why? They made from God in his image and in his likeness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your young men shall see visions and old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I'm going to pour out my spirit in those days. And, and now this was Joel prophesying the day Peter's telling them about. And they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of fire and smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon until blood before the coming of the great day of the Lord. We still, he's prophesying things still yet to come. See, that great day of the Lord is when we come with Jesus, not when Jesus comes for us. That's the rapture. But there, there, there's a lot of great things still yet to take place. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this is the same message we got to preach. Miss Helen, Angel, whosoever. You mean, yeah, that one too. <laughs> that one that's being mean to your buddy, mean, mean to your son or daughter. That one too, amen. Because you're not God. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, 
Miracles of Jesus. Come and see. And wonders and signs which God did through him. See, Jesus said, the works I do, it's not me. It's the Father in me. Jesus said, I got to do these works. This is why I came. So why did he walk past the gate beautiful? That guy had been begging for alms. Because the Father said, not today, son. Jesus wanted to heal that man. I'm just getting his revelation. Jesus wanted to heal him because that's his, that's, Jesus, that's his child. But Jesus only did what the Father said do. Now, we're not God, so we don't, we don't question God. Don't question him. Amen. Love him. Obey him. <laughs> Amen. Fathers, obey. Son, children, obey. That's what it says. Obey your parents. Just do what they say. You'll be a parent one day. You'll understand. You'll get revelation, won't you, Buck? They'll get revelation one day. <laughs> Wash your socks. Pick your socks up. I'm like, man, mama, I know what you meant. <laughs> Every time I come home and I see my son's boots, and these boots are heavy boots, lineman boots. They weigh about 50 pounds. Sitting there and socks here and clothes there. I'm like, rapture. <laughs> get me out of here. I'm tired of picking up clothes, Jim. I just need to say, leave a note, right? <laughs> leave a note right there. Just, but I'm not. I'm being merciful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, y'all been there. And I still take them, take them out to eat, buy their, buy their dinner. Why? Come on, y'all know the answer. Love you love them. <laughs> you love them. Hallelujah. Now, Mama, Mama loves them too, but she got a little bit, Mama kind of go off a little bit before Daddy will, but Mama ain't been there. Where was I at, Randy? Help me. Somebody help me. 22, thank you. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus, a man that done miracles through God, and you know it. 23, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands. Woo, Peter, getting bold, ain't he? Have crucified, and you put him to death. Whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death. That's, that's good news right there. Whew. Loose those pains of death. Because it was not possible that Jesus should be held by it. For David said concerning him, I foresaw, I foresaw the law always before my face. For he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. That's good news right there. I tell you what, God stands with you when nobody will stand with you. And he holds you by the hand. Therefore, my heart, David said, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. That's a good word for those that have departed, for those that are, that are nearby. That if, your, if your mother, if your son, if your daughter has got faith in Jesus, they're resting with him. Now, this body's resting, but they're with Jesus. Because David said, my flesh is going to rest in hope. Knowing that there's what? For you will not leave my soul in hell, Hades, hell. Nor will you allow your Holy One, talking about Jesus, to see corruption. That's why Jesus' body, he had to be raised the third day because fourth day, he start, your body starts to decompose. Jesus was raised because of this prophecy. God said, I will not let my son see corruption because he will pay the penalty of sin, but his body will not corrupt. Jesus knew that. When he knew his father. You have made known to me, now this is David, you have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Right there, I don't care what you're going through, what I'm going through. It's, the Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And if he never leaves you, Terry, that means his presence is always with you. Amen. But see, we've got to invoke that prayer. We've got to invoke the Holy Ghost. We've got to invoke that joy. We've got to draw it out, draw it out by faith like you draw out water. Out of a well. And you keep, you keep pulling. See, sometimes we don't know how deep the well is. Come on. God don't, Terry, we don't know how deep the, the, the pain is. Come on. But God knows how deep his pain is. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. So we got to keep giving God faith. But you know what? There's coming a day he's coming to the top. And when he comes to the top, he comes to, to the light. And when you get the light, you, the darkness has to leave. Amen. So we just keep giving God the faith bucket until what? Until they see the light. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that's for you, brother. And all those keep giving God faith. 
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You will make me full of joy, David said, in your presence. And then, and then, uh, and then Peter said, see, all, all this Peter is getting by the Holy Ghost right now. Because he's filled with the Holy Ghost. And Jesus is telling the Holy Spirit, give this to Peter right now. Shoot into the Spirit right now. It's like you got injected with the, it's like you get a, injected with the message right then. Amen. Now, you can, you can shut your mouth and not say it. But I'd rather say what God says. Let it out. I'll tell you right now. My brother got some deliverance yesterday. He got some injection yesterday. Now, he's got some pains that are still there. They're deep. But when I went to that birthday party, his daughters, his two grandbabies, I'm sitting with him, me and him sitting at a table. Now, there's, there's other people in the room, but those tables are full. I even told my one family, it's got my siblings sitting there and their kids. The, the table's only got six chairs. You know how you keep pulling up chairs? You keep pulling up chairs, you're running out of table. I said, y'all are, un, y'all are in your, how will you say that? The occupancy level is too much on this table. I'm sitting over here. I love you, but I'm sitting over here. Y'all done exceeded the limits, what I said. You know how they keep doing that, Jim? Everybody wants to be at that table. But I went over and sat with my brother. He was sitting by himself. I went over and we sat, man, we talked, had a good time. I talked about the pool certification because we both used to work together. But then at the end of the party, I got to go. I, got to, I need to come up here and mow, and I'm getting ready to go. And I get up, and, oh, man, this is God. <laughs> I shared this with somebody. I forget who it was now. I shared it with Pastor Reed. When I got up, there was something I've been wanting to ask my brother. When Mom passed, she was with hospice. But there comes a time to where the medicine gets there and she can't communicate no more. But before that time came, you know, we're all there. Her prayer, her request was that when, when it was her time, that uh, she would not have to go to the nursing home and that she, all of her family would be there and she would go in her home, in her bed, in her place. So uh, we were all there and we were all just kind of saying our goodbyes before because I've got a sister that's a nurse. She knows when she starts getting so many ounces of the medicine if you want to say something to mom you need to start saying it you know you need to have those conversations and we all just you know I forget, I forget what I told mama now yeah, I know I told her I loved her i see you soon mama <laughs> but uh and I don't know if my brother I've only got one brother three sisters and I don't know if he was the last but Jim when he went over there now mama was getting weak but when he when he went over there she reached up and she grabbed him by the grabbed him by the neck and pulled him down, and whispered something in his ear. Now I told and I and when I sat down, I said, Junior, I said, can I ask you something? And I said, Now, I'm not exalting myself because I'm the baby brother. I just want to ask you something, because that's my mama too. I said, Do you, Can you tell me what my mama reached up and I told him? I said, She pulled you down. What'd she tell you? I want. I want. Can you tell me? And he said, I don't remember. I'm like, I'm, I'm like you're going to remember like Spock. Remember. I want to know what she told you because she's get, she getting ready to go to heaven. I want to know. But let me tell you what he did tell me. He said, I don't remember that. He said, but I'll, I'll tell you something. Now, this happened before she hospice was called, but she was getting close to her departure date. That she was sitting, at, she was with the house, and I think my oldest sister was there. Might might just been her, and Mama went into the, one of these things to where she felt like she was going now. I don't know how that feeling was, and she, it was an urgency. And, and Melinda was the only one there, and she's like, Mama was like, my family's not my, get the kids here. I want everybody here. It was kind of like an urgency. Well, my brother got there, and my sister. I'm, I think I'm up here at church, maybe somewhere. Because I'm on, I'm on the phone with my older sister. I said, she'll be all right. Just tell her, pray in the Holy Ghost, you know. Because I've talked to mom about praying in tongues. And I said, you'll see. It'll, it'll come upon her. And, and I think Melinda did say, yeah, I see it. I see it. And it, peace, you know, peace and comfort. If you're going to be with Jesus. But Junior said, I, I saw that. And, she, and, and she said, started talking about his son that's not here, my nephew. Mama started talking about, I'm getting ready to go see Chris. And that spoke to my brother's heart because she said, if she's getting ready, she's seeing Jesus, she's seeing his son in heaven, 
That's, that's touching his heart because, see, my brother found his son unconscious and gave him CPR. And he's got some pain because that's his son. But I asked that question because God told me to ask that question because I've seen some deliverance coming. Because I've seen, I seen, I seen it, Wayne. That question needed to be asked. There were some things I told my wife after I got born again. I just needed to say, and when I said it, I thought it was for her. Some things that I did, but I say I'm forgiven. I knew I was, but I said, I felt like I need to tell this to my wife. When I told it to her, Brittany, you know what she said? She said, that's for you. I'm already healed from all that stuff. See, a lot of times what you say, God says, do this. It's not for you. It's for that person. And I just went, I was overjoyed. Why? God's working. He's revealing. Revelation's coming. Amen. And I don't know how deep somebody's pain is. Neither do you. But if we just keep talking about Jesus, come on, they're going to get delivered. Because God is out to save every soul. And if you'll just listen to the Holy Ghost, he'll give you, he'll give you something to say, the right thing to say. Amen. Amen. And you think it might be for you, but it's really for somebody else. Because God is a God of miracles. Amen. Amen. Go here. Do that. Say this. Say that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I felt, man, I, I, and when I say I felt the presence of God right then, and I'll say it again, I told Kerry, he'll be at this church one day on his own free will. Amen. I just believe it, Kerry. Kerry even spoke it. He didn't know, you didn't know you was going to say that, did you? I told Kerry right then, I said, thank you, I received that. He's going to be at this church. Why? Because I didn't judge him. I've never judged him. Now, there was a time in my life when I got born again and I went over there by the gym call. I was in the cage stage. I was just, <laughs> I was telling everybody I met Jesus and you need to meet Jesus now. <laughs> I mean, it was just that evangelistic gift. But I was doing things in the flesh and not listening to the God. And I was bringing con condemnation to people instead of, you know what I mean? Holy Ghost conviction. Because I really, I wanted them to get rid of, I want you to be free, man. I'm free from this. You can be too. I grew up with you. <laughs> Amen. But unless God, unless the Father say it, at the right time, you're going you're gonna to mess things up. You understand what I'm saying? But when it's the right time, come on. You'll know it. You'll know it. Hallelujah. Whoo, glory. We still got time to get the lame man? Y'all got time? Anybody need to stretch? Anybody need to stretch? Somebody give me a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I believe. I believe. In, miracles. In miracles. Hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> you know, and I, and I told my brother, I said, I said, this is what I thought she said to you. I'm getting ready to meet Jesus and Chris that day. But she had already spoken that. So I told him, I said, hey, I think that's what she said to you. If, you know, I, I, that's what I was saying. Because I know mama getting ready to go. She's seeing and she's hearing some things in heaven. Amen. Amen. So, and I've heard plenty of testimony of people right before they go, I see Jesus. My, my, my grandma on my daddy's side. My mom Jackson. Can I tell you another story? I like telling little stories as they come. Uh, she, all, she was good to me. When I say good, she fed me what I like to eat. <laughs> they cut taters back then. Say taters. taters. Like you get it, Mr. C's. I, I went from French fries, I'm going back to taters, you know, because she cut, but she cut the peeling off. And that was pretty, if you cut me taters and French fries and ketchup, taters and ketchup, I, I live. I'm, and lifting tea, instant lifting tea. I can remember the little table I said it. It was a little blue and, and gray square table. It had squares on them, different colors, and I just... Play, you know, I was a kid. I was just finding my way to my mom's house or whatever. But through divorce, through separation, you know how families go. We didn't go see Moel. They never came really saw us. We was under. Daddy wouldn't let us go see people. We were just under. We was controlled. We could go see his mom, his mom and daddy. We just couldn't go see my mama's mom. So then when mom and daddy separated, we went and seen Mama and Papa Burke, and we didn't go see Mama and Papa Jackson. You know what? You know how things go. You can't drive. You, you, you're not the adult. You're the kid. You don't understand all this stuff. But when I got born again, I wanted to go see everybody, right? Because I want to let everybody know Jesus loves everybody, and He can help you 
get out of your mess. So I didn't go see her as much as I wanted to, but I went and visited. But there come a time to when she was in the hospital. And, and I don't remember this because I wasn't, but they talk about the Pentecostals, how they used to roll their hairs up. But when the, when, the, when the spirit gets to moving, the hair be flying down. You know, my mom had that. She had long black hair, but she'd always roll up in curls. I always just seen the curls. I hardly ever seen her with the hair down. But I said, even in, in the hospital, she had her hair up. But uh, she let it down when, she, when I get, she watched him. She babysit me. If I didn't listen, she turned into mean mama. She let her hair down, and she put one of those stockings over her face. One of them brown stockings and smushes your face. I straighten up real fast. Man, she scared me. She bring out she bring out Frankie Frankie Stein, the ones y'all used to put on the door. They were full size door plastic. She put him on the door, man, and I, I'd straighten up. See, my mamas know they know how to straighten you up. And where's I going with that? But my mom, she 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 she's getting ready to meet Jesus. You know, my cousin called me because they knew I was in the ministry and I was. I wasn't full-time minister, but I was ministering to people. You know, God has given to each one of us a ministry of reconciliation to bring each other back to Jesus. You can do that. You know, they, they, might, they might listen to you, and they might not. But just say what Jesus says. And they called me. So, you know, my mom was getting ready to go. Thought she'd like to know. I was at a football. I think I was at a football game uh, in Mooresville. And uh, it's hard to pull me from a football game when your kids are playing now. That's but I went after the game. <laughs> Jesus let her stay till after the game. Amen. That was kind of selfish, but I'm like, I went. But uh, I got up there, and they said she's pretty much comatized. If you want to say anything, go ahead and say it. Well, y'all know me. I'm kind of clumsy sometimes. Sometimes. I don't claim to be clumsy. Come on. But that night, you know, they used to have the TVs on the wall. You used to put quarters in them. That's when you used to put it. it, it was, I don't know if you still put quarters back then. Y'all remember that? If mama, mama took me to the funeral home, and she took me to the hospital with her to visit people. She knew, I guess she knew there was a calling on me. I just didn't know it. I don't want to go, Mama. <laughs> I don't want to go to the funeral home with you. And when she take me to the hospital, she goes, here's you some quarters. Watch you some cartoons. <laughs> you know, mamas know how to make you feel, feel good about the situation. So I walk in there, you know, and first thing I do is you know, say, and she, she's not doing too good. And I come around, and I hit that TV on the corner of my head. I had hair back then, so it didn't hurt quite as bad. I hit that thing, and you know what happened? My mom woke up. <laughs> Is that you, Robert? <laughs> it's old clumsy Robert here. She woke up out of that coma, Jim, whether she was comatized or not. But they said that she'd been talking about she's seeing Jesus. She's seeing Jesus. And I went over there, and I talked about my mom, and I prayed for her and blessed her, whatever I did. But you know what? I went. Come on. <laughs> I went and said my goodbyes and told my mom, I'll see you in heaven one day. And, and I don't remember. I probably told her I appreciate all the things she did for me. That's what you should do. Amen? And uh, I was there, and I thank God I was there. So if you're supposed to be somewhere, and your family's saying, when I say your family, they might not see you on eye to eye like you do. But well, they might not quite understand why you want to go be there because they never were there for you because Jesus would go. He would go and sit upon sinners, sit around with the sinners, and they may have mocked him. You go over there and sit around with sinners. Jesus said, those that are healthy don't need a physician, but it's those that are sick that need to be healed. Jesus was about healing people and setting people free. Let me tell you, that same Jesus is here today. Lame man said, I'll be okay the next Sunday. We're going to unhook right there. He's still crying out. He's still begging for alms. You know what? Jesus is on the way. Amen. See, Jesus in the, in the flesh could only go so far and be at so many places. But come on, guys. We the church. We're an army now. Jesus is not just, God's not just one, limited to one body now. He's got the body of Christ. So the same works. Jesus said, the works that I do, you shall do. But you can't do it without the Holy Ghost. Now, you, and when I say without the Holy Ghost, on you. <laughs> Come on. He's in you, but he wants to be on you for what? For service. I tell you what, Jim, my pastor, he served in the Navy. For how many years, Jim? 20 years. And I tell you what, when he's in the Navy, he had a suit on. <laughs> right, Jim? 
You probably couldn't, couldn't do certain things without your what? Without your suit on. Maybe certain things. <laughs> Why? That was the requirements of the U.S. Navy. They had a, I'm trying to remember what I had. They had some type of code. Dress code. <laughs> dress code. Some churches and you tell some camps, some schools have dress code. Uniform of the day. <coughs> Man, that's good. That's a good word right there. Jesus wore all kind of uniforms. Some called him Jehovah Rapha. He had the healing uniform on. So come on, y'all give me some names. Some of them called him Jehovah Shalom. He had the uniform of peace on. Now, when I said he had it on, it's just the one that he was operating in at the time. Amen? Because he had all those uniforms in his closet <laughs> right by his side. I mean, that closet's right there. Your prayer closet, you ain't, it, ain't a, it ain't a natural place. It's a spiritual place. Amen? It's right here. The Holy Ghost is right here. And at any time, working the miracles can take place. The gifts of healing, gifts of healing can take place. I'm a little cool back here. I'm not... Y'all look cool. I don't see nobody fanning the flame. Holy Ghost. Watch this. I'm going to speak to the Holy Ghost. Heat. We need heat. No, we're, gonna, we're just going to cut the air conditioning off. See, you don't need no more heat, Randy. You just need to get, when I say you, I'm just talking about when, when Christ speaks to the church. You don't need no more faith. You just need to get that unbelief out of you. See, it, it, heat's not the problem. Cold, cold is not the problem. We've got to remove the heat. You know, that's not the problem. See, Darkness is, is not the problem. They just need light. Because darkness is the absence of light. You understand? Some people think they got all this darkness and I can't get out of the dark. No, you just need the light. You just need the light because darkness is the absence of light. But the light shines in the darkness. Some people can't comprehend it because they've never heard about Jesus. They've never heard that he's a healer. Because somebody never told them. Well, we're going to tell them, amen, that he's a miracle working Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. He's a saving Jesus. And if you listen online, if you're at Hope Church or if you're out here in the world and you need hope, you came to the right church. This is a church of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, if you'll, Romans 10, 8 through 10 says, if you've never heard about Jesus, come on, church, we tell them today, we tell you about Jesus. And the Bible says, if you'll believe in your heart, that God, that's God's son. God's own, when I say his only son, it's the only begotten. It's the only one that came from heaven to save Adam, to save that generation. See, we from Adam on the earth. We from God, but we came, God planted us in this earth. Come on, but now it's time for some people need to be resurrected. They're in the earth, but they're dead. They need to see the light. Today, light's coming. Jesus came. If you'll receive that light, if you'll receive Jesus today, and believe that that's God's son and God raised him from the dead. And if you'll confess him as Lord, he'll take away all the sin and make you a new creature and you'll be born again. If you're here in that church, if you're here in this church and you've heard this message today and you've never received Jesus or you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, never spoke in tongues, I would encourage you at this time as Wayne comes up to minister in music, won't you just come on up and receive Jesus or receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and freely speak in tongues. If 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 that make if you're online watching, send us an email. Come to 757 Harris Street. That's Concord, North Carolina, 28027. You say Concord, we say Concord. Amen. But just come here and Jesus is the conqueror. We gotta help them. They're gonna help me. Learn how to say concord. But you know what? It's conquered. Whew, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm trying to remember that thing. And somebody will help me if I miss it wrong, but on payday, we got direct deposit now, so it's kind of not as good as the old, old days where they used to, used to get your own check and go cash it. And then you would hand it over to your wife <coughs> and say, I'm a conqueror. I got paid, but now she's more than a conqueror because you gave it right to her. <laughs> she's more than a conqueror. She didn't work for it, but you gave it to her. You don't have to work to get born again. Jesus freely gave you, gives you life. 
And that makes you more than a conqueror. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. And all we got to do is say, Lord, I need you. And if you'll give your life to Jesus, he'll give his life, everlasting life to you. And the benefits of that is healing, deliverance, blessings wherever you go, chasing you down. New houses, new homes, new communities. Amen. So if you've never received Jesus, he's calling. I don't know if Wayne knows that softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. But he, he, let me just give you, let me give you a few words of it. I was singing it this morning. Tammy, you might help me. It says, I'm <clears throat> getting my voice down. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. All in whole center, come home, come home, come home. You that are weary, come home. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, whole sinner, come home. One more time. Come home. Come home. Quit being weary. Ye that are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus. Is calling, calling, whole sinner, come home. Is anybody here today that would say, I've, I've not called Jesus, I've not came home? Come right now. If you're watching online, you ain't got to come to this church, come to Jesus. He's calling. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm lost. I have sinned, I have missed the mark, but today I'm calling on you. And when you call on Jesus, he comes in and he takes away your sin. By his blood, it's washed as far as the east is from the west. Never to be mentioned again before the Father. That's the freedom we have in Christ. And if you do that, you'll find out that healing won't be a problem. I said it shouldn't be a problem. If you'll just help walk with Jesus and become a disciple. And you find out what you didn't know before, you can know now. I don't have to be a slave to sin. I don't have to be poor anymore. Amen. Because Jesus ain't poor. And everything that he has, he's got more. I said he got more. So, Father, we just thank you right now, Lord, that according to the people in this church, everybody knows you. And, Lord, I'm believing they all get filled with your spirit. Speak in tongues. Prophesy like Peter. Prophesy, speak in tongues, and give interpretations and say, hey, you need Jesus. Jesus is the way. He's always, his light's always on. All you got to do is come home and get saved. If you got personal prayer, if we can agree with you on something today, I'd ask you to come down while, the, while Wayne's ministering and while everybody's here. Why? Because the Bible says there, there's power in agreement. And when we stay hooked up with, in agreement with the Word of God, if you need a miracle, you got sickness in your body that you're tired of being sick, come up here and let Jesus remove it. You got depression. Thoughts of depression hit you. Thoughts of failure. I'm never going to be enough. I'm never going to. I'm never. Come on up here. God will say, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Anything you need agreement for. I'm giving you, he's giving you the opportunity to come so we can pray with you. And if you're online, send us a prayer request. Pastor at wofwc.org, send us a request. Or you can send it to Robert J. 1966 at gmail.com. We will respond. I'll respond. God has responded. But you got to respond. You got to be a faith responder. 
Sometimes you got to step out of your complacency and step into his place. Come to his place. Mercy and grace. Mercy and grace. Hallelujah. Don't have to be sick no more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Everybody just praying the Holy Ghost. Praying the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray for our, we're going to pray for, we're going to pray for Israel. That's why I'm holding this thing in my hand. I can't let loose of it. If you got your, if you got this, you got this prayer sheet, get it out right now. You know what we're going to do? We're going to attack, we're going to attack the enemies of Israel with our words. And, and this is just something I handed out. You can take it home. You can pray it and you, you can turn around, put your, put your prayer on it too. It's just, just, just something the Lord gave me this morning. You know what? This came from uh, Pastor John Hagee because we're partners with CUFI, Christians United for Israel. And when we do what the Bible says, we'll be blessed because God needs all of our voices to take care of the enemies in this world. So, Lord God of Israel, we petition heaven with our united prayers as we seek your blessing, your peace, and your protection for our beloved Israel. Almighty God, we ask that you defend Israel's cause and intervene on her behalf, for you are a strong tower of defense for those who love you. Lord, you are our king, the mighty shield of the righteous, and we ask that you accompany Israel's troops into battle, that you fight alongside them, keep them from all harm, and quickly deliver into their hands those who would seek to destroy them. Holy One of Israel, we ask that you miraculously bring every hostage safely home without having to release murderers or terrorists in exchange. May your loving arms bring comfort to those who mourn the loss of their loved ones. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we ask that you bless Israel's leaders with the courage of Joshua, the wisdom of Solomon, and the fortitude of King David to make difficult decisions. Lord, unite them with your one purpose. Give them the determination and resources to utterly destroy their enemies so that this horrific carnage never happens again. Father God, galvanize America's leaders so our nation may steadfastly and unconditionally stand beside our friend and ally. May the Lord be with Israel as he was with her forefathers. May he not lead them or forsake them in their time of trouble. For as King David said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you saved me from violence. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall Israel be saved from her enemies. We ask in the name above all names, the name of Jesus, that peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God and there is no other. Can you say amen? Let's stand together. As we stand, we stand with Israel and we stand with God. And Jesus stands, and those that stand with God will stand forever. I said, we will stand forever in righteousness. Lord, we thank you, for our Father. Holy Spirit, we thank you for taking our prayers and bringing them to pass. Lord, for your angels right now beside us, with us, for us, among us, going to fight for your people. Lord, for knocking those missiles out of the ground. Lord, bring confusion to the enemies. Lord, let their missiles go astray. Lord, let them go back the other way, Lord. Let them bring where they brought, try to bring destruction to the innocent, Lord. Let it turn on them right now, Father, because you said those that come against you, those that come out against you will come with it, and it will be deterred seven ways, seven ways back to them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for that, Lord, and we believe. We believe and we receive. I speak blessings over this body, Lord, that they're blessed going out and blessed coming in. Lord, I thank you for the, for the financial blessings that they will receive and see today in their finances, Lord, for miracles in their finances, Father. And I give you the praise for that. And everybody said, amen. amen. So be it and hallelujah. Be blessed. and we'll Thank you for joining us today at Word of Faith Worship Center. I pray God's grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then according to Romans 10, 8 through 10, 
the word is nigh unto thee, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as your Lord and believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. We would ask you today to simply say, yes, I believe this, and I say yes to Jesus. Now, if you just received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we would encourage you to get into a good church. Our church is located at 757 Harris Street, Northwest, Concord, North Carolina, 28025. And you can also find us on the Internet at wordoffaithworshipcenter.org or wofwc.org. We hope to see you soon. Blessings.